Hey guys, welcome to my channel. There's words I never thought I would say. Um, <laughs> and that's probably words you thought I would never say. So this is my second video, my first official intro. I figured I would do a Q&A. You guys can get to know me. I mean, for those of you that already know me, shout out to you. But if you don't, you know, I think it will be a good icebreaker. And I've done Q&As before on Insta Story, on Snapchat, but as I mentioned in my vlog, you know, after 24 hours, it's gone. So let's just, let's just jump right in, okay? I'm gonna answer the ones I find are the most interesting or you know the ones i want to answer so someone asked how do you pronounce my name so how to pronounce my name it's amrezi it's not amrezi it's not amrezi it's not amrezi amrezi okay say it with me amrezi how did you get started on instagram this question I get asked probably the most anytime someone new follows me or even if it's not someone new, some of my OG followers, shout out to you. For those of you that don't know, I've been on Instagram since 2011. I actually had another page before my Amrezi page and that one was called Amrush. Only OG writers would know that. How I got started is the most random story ever. So I was on Facebook one day and a bunch of my friends on Facebook were posting photos with filters. And I was like, what? How do they get their photos to look like that? Like, my photos look all basic. You know, back in the day, there wasn't any editing. There wasn't filter apps. There wasn't none of that. And this was probably like, I don't want to say the first generation of iPhones, but I don't know. I don't know what iPhone I had at this time. This was a long, long, long time ago. But I was so intrigued by all of my friends' photos. They had like all these cool effects. There were these cool colors. And I was like, okay, let me ask my friend what they're using because I need to be put on. And my friend was like, oh, it's um, it's a photo editing app called Instagram. So that's what I was under the impression that Instagram was. I had no idea Instagram was a whole <laughs> social platform. Before Instagram, I would post them on to Facebook. And this is when I was working in Sephora. So I downloaded it, all my photos, but all these, you know, like the beginning filters of Instagram, like back in the day, it would save to my camera roll and I would just upload them to Facebook. The whole time I had no idea that Instagram was a social media platform itself until one day I was just scrolling through all my photos that I had uploaded and I double tapped by accident and I seen the heart and I was like, what the hell is this? What, what is this? And then I started like, you know, messing with all the functions and then I clicked on the explore page and it was like a whole new world. <laughs> I was like, what is this? At the same time, obviously I was fascinated because I've always been obsessed with social media that I won't lie. And you know, I, I seen all these dope people just posting these amazing photos and I was like, oh my God, there's people on here. And then that was the first time that I seen that there was like a whole little mini beauty community. Back in 2011, there wasn't that many people on Instagram. I mean, Instagram was literally a baby. There was a few makeup artists and I remember my first person that I ever followed, not first like in general, but first makeup artist that I ever followed was Crispy. Shout out to Crispy. She was killing it and I was so inspired. Like, I was like, oh my God, you could post like your makeup and your eye shots your finished look and people actually like this, like people were actually engaging. And then I remember I followed Makeup by Griselda. She was sugar pants back in the day. Again, only OGs would know this. And then the girl that owns Melt Cosmetics, Laura. So those three were the top three girls that were killing it. I remember being so inspired by them. From there, I just started posting looks. And every single day I would go to work I would take photos before I would head to work because I worked in Sephora so obviously I had to have a full face makeup on. I would take my little selfies and post them on the way to work. And it was just so fascinating like it became like a routine every single day. It was just I was obsessed with taking photos. I was obsessed with posting it on Instagram. I had a few followers and then slowly the the community started growing and I mean now it's like this big beast in 2019 but you know it took a while to get here so the beginning of my instagram career if you want to call it or social media career was really an accident 
I didn't get on Instagram because I was like, oh my god, I want something from it or oh, I want to be famous or I want to get paid. Like nobody was getting paid, literally. Like, I mean, I don't want to say no, maybe some people were getting paid. I definitely wasn't getting paid. It took years of free work and free promotion to even make any money. But that's not what I was doing it for. I was doing it because I genuinely loved posting photos. And even before that, I've always had social media and I was always very social media obsessed. So yeah, that's how I got started. And you know, in time, opportunities started opening and you know, thank God. But yeah, it was, it was really an accident how I got started. And I never was really looking for any specific outcome or I never did it for like, oh, I want this out of it. I was just doing it because it was fun. And I still do it because it's fun. It just so happens now I make money from it. So, I mean, which is a plus. You get to do something you love and you make money for it. It's a win-win. Okay, next question. What is your biggest fear? Hmm. I mean, if we're gonna be realistic, my biggest fear, heights. I'm deadly, deadly afraid of heights. We have a balcony and I'm not gonna tell you what floor we're on, but we're on a really high floor and I literally barely ever go on the balcony because I'm so shook. Literally just looking down, I get like, no, I just can't, I can't. So I would have to say heights, I'm, that's, my, that's my biggest fear. What do you like more, LA or NYC? I mean, you guys already know the answer to this question. Obviously New York, right behind me in the view. But you know, I'm a New Yorker at the end of the day. I grew up here, it's home, and it's always gonna have a special place in my heart. And my opinion is obviously biased because I did grow up here, so New York would definitely have to be my favorite. Okay, next question. Did you always know you wanted to be someone in the beauty industry or is this something that just happened? I had no idea any of this would happen, honestly. Like, I had no idea. It was, again, going back to what I answered previously, it was so... <laughs> random and not planned and had no expectation it was just again something i was doing for fun in my wildest dreams i would never think i would be where i am today or doing what i do or there would even be a job of getting free makeup free product free clothes and then getting to work with brands collaborate with brands build relationships with brands, brands that were back in the day, it was impossible to even reach. So no, I never, ever, ever thought I would be where I am today. It just, it just kind of happened, but I'm happy it happened. Oh, this is another good question. Did you ever go to beauty school? So I actually did go to beauty school. I went to MUD in Soho. I went there after high school. Yeah, after high school, 2006. Wow, I'm old. <laughs> 2006, I went to MUD in Soho. I just took the beauty course. I didn't take avant-garde. There was a bunch of classes that you could take, but it was so expensive. And I only took one course, which was beauty. I got my certificate or diploma, whatever you want to call it. I will say I didn't really learn much. I mean, I hate to say that, but I didn't. I feel like I learned most through experience, through working in Sephora, Mac, on clients, freelancing. You can't really teach that. Like, yeah, you could maybe teach some basics. I mean, and when I mean basics, I mean you can teach the basics, basic steps of makeup. You need experience in order to really improve your skill. What was your dream job when you were little? So I always wanted to be a model, a supermodel <laughs> at that. Um, Obviously, I was not given the gift of height, but I'm 5'3", so, you know, I've never seen a 5'3 girl walking down the runway. Um, I hope one day there will be. I always wanted to be a model, like, ever since I was a little girl. That's That was always kind of like a dream. So, I guess now in some type of way with being an influencer and shooting content all the time, I guess I'm kind of living out my dreams besides, you know, the whole runway portion. How long do pictures take? So shooting photos is, it, I mean, it all varies on what you're shooting. If you're shooting a makeup look, you know, it could take anywhere from seven to 10 minutes 
15 tops depending on if you really can't get that angle but outfits outfits i feel like are quicker for me people always ask me how do i manage to get so much content how do i always have backed up content it honestly takes no longer than i want to say seven minutes tops for each look it's anything over seven minutes at that point if i can't get the shot i'm not even doing it. i know maybe some people may shoot even longer and that's totally fine i'm not saying that there's you know a set time i always do the same angles the same poses I don't, I mean, I, I try to change it up every once in a while, but I'm like, I do what, what works and I know that what works won't take that long. So seven to 10 minutes, I would say, is how much each look or outfit or makeup would take. What's your favorite season? My favorite season is spring and fall. Now I know that's shocking that I didn't say summer, because most people's favorite season is summer. I love summer, but it just gets too hot. I'm like, I get over it after like a month. I'm like, okay, and I'm ready for the next season. I love spring because it's not too hot, it's not too cold, and I love spring clothing, fashion in general. And then fall is like, you know, you get to wear your little booties and your little scarves and jackets, and you get to really layer. I guess I love both of these seasons for the fashion. I like a balance in the weather. I don't like when it's too hot or too cold. I don't like extremes. So when it's too hot, I'm melting. My makeup is sweating off. It's disgusting. And then when it's too cold, obviously I'm freezing to death. And either one doesn't do it for me. So I would definitely have to say spring and fall. How did you and Leo meet? So I've been getting asked this for years and I've never really talked about it. I mean, not that it's like some big secret, but <laughs> um, we actually met in Sephora. I um, obviously applied to work there as a makeup artist. He already worked there. He was operations, so he basically takes care of packaging. You know, he would do animations for the windows and making sure everything was in stock. And so basically anything to do with operations is what he did. And I guess it was fate that brought us together. So yeah, we met at work in Sephora. And now these days we work together. It's kind of crazy how how life works but it was the best thing that ever happened to me your home always seems neat do you have a non-formal area or is it always that neat okay so <laughs> my home is not always neat the living room i will say the living portion and the dining portion which is basically together in the same little area is always really clean but a neat but my room, oh my God, if you've seen the other side of this room, like if I flip the camera, <laughs> it's a hot mess. I have boxes of makeup, clothing, hair products. I have outfits that I'm going to shoot within the next few days. It literally looks like a hot mess in here. So I would say that the non-neat area is always my beauty room. This is a good one. Being insta-famous comes with rude and negativity. How do you take care of your mental health? This is like super important because a lot of people, I mean, some people do talk about it and more and more people are feeling more comfortable to talk about bullying and you know, the things that people online have to go through every day. What I try to do is I always talk to Leo. Leo is like, Leo's my everything. He is my therapist, my, my love, my husband, my best friend, my work partner, we, he's literally everything for me. It, it's not easy getting hundreds of, I'm not going to say thousands, but hundreds of comments that most of the time they are positive and I'm very grateful for that. But then you do get those negative ones that, you know, sometimes they hit hard and people say some really nasty things. I feel it's important to talk to someone. 100% like if you're holding it in and suppressing it and pretending like it doesn't bother you when it does and you kind of just implode and now you're just you have all these issues because you didn't bring it to the table and you didn't talk about it you didn't release all this tension it gets worse essentially so I always try to nip it in the bud I talk to Leo or if I'm not talking to Leo I'll talk to my cousin or my best friend or someone that I feel can maybe soothe the situation and give me a different perspective because sometimes you read these comments and 
you're like, why would someone say this to me? Like, why would someone be this nasty for no reason? Like, what did I do to this person? And it, it's not easy. I'm definitely not gonna say it's easy. And whoever tells you it's easy is lying, unless you're just a robot. And, you know, you don't feel a thing. And, you know, I think that if you're communicating your feelings, it's healthy. Talking about it with someone that you trust and love usually gets me out of any funk or anytime I feel down or anytime I feel like a comment offends me. I talk about it and literally every single time I feel so much better. After I vent, I'm like, okay, I'm good. This is what comes with the territory. Usually that's what the other person tells me whether it's leo whether it's you know whoever it is comes with the territory and just sometimes having someone remind me of that and letting me know like it's not just you it's okay it's not personal don't take it personal they might not even mean that toward you maybe that's just how they feel maybe it's just projection maybe they're having a bad day and they need someone to take it out on so as as hurtful as they could be i try 90 percent of the time not to take it personal that 10% is when I'm feeling vulnerable or maybe I'm not having a good day and certain comments hit a nerve. But I feel like the best thing that you could do is communicate. Favorite ice cream flavor? Chocolate. I'm a chocolate lover. I love anything chocolate. I eat so much chocolate. It's not normal, which is probably why I'm always breaking out. But I still love it and I'm still going to continue to eat it. <laughs> Oh, this is a good question. Would you ever sign up to a reality TV show if it was on a popular network like Bravo or, or VH1? I used to want to be on reality TV years ago and then I kind of had a change of heart, but that's not to say that I won't change my mind again. If the right opportunity presented itself, I may consider. I guess I always was kind of nervous about you know being on such a huge platform i mean social media is a big platform but it's not as big as tv and i guess i never wanted to dibble and dabble in those waters if i couldn't mentally or emotionally handle it but i feel as the older i get the stronger I get. I mean, I guess I, I wouldn't be opposed to it. If it was the right opportunity and I was able to direct and approve what's going up, meaning what clips they're using, you know, as long as it's not they're editing clips of things that I said and put it with another clip to make it seem like I said something when I did it, that's something I would never do. But if it was more in my terms and I was able to kind of control the content that, that is being cut and, and put out into the world, I may consider. Do you speak and understand Montenegrin? Yes, I do. I will say my Montenegrin is a little rusty <laughs> and it's embarrassing, I know. You don't even have to tell me. I speak English every single day and ever since I moved to the US, by the way, if you didn't know, I was an immigrant, now you know. I moved here when I was nine years old and I speak English on the daily, even to my mom, to my parents, to my brother. I speak English 24 seven. So naturally when you don't speak a certain language, even if you were fluent on it, or if that was your first language, you kind of tend to forget a little bit. So of course I understand it, but it's a little rusty when I speak back and it's not, it's not as fluent as I would like it to be. What city of Montenegro are you from? I am from Plov and Gusine. So I grew up in Plov and Gusine. I was born in Berane. You guys are gonna have to Google that because Montenegro is such a small country. I know half of you won't even know where Montenegro is right now because most people, when I tell them where I'm from, they're like, what? Montenegro has like 600,000 people. So it's a very, very, very small country. And I was born there. Someone asked, do you ever miss LA? If so, what, by the way? I can't say that I do. The only, I will say, people that I miss from LA is Claudia and Anastasia. And, you know, we were always together. We were always hanging out. We were always having some type of dinner, a, a gathering, an event. So that's probably the only thing I would say I miss about LA. Besides that, I really don't. Favorite TV show? <laughs> Friends. 
my favorite show of all time is Friends. I grew up on Friends, literally, like grew up watching Friends my entire childhood. And when I was a teenager and still obviously in my adult life now, I watch Friends every single day. Call me corny, call me whatever. I love Friends, it's iconic and no one can tell me different. How do you recommend someone starting a career as a social media influencer? My advice to someone that's starting out is just take it easy. Have fun, have fun posting content, have fun doing whatever you're doing, whether you're doing makeup, whether you're an artist and you're sketching, whether you're a fashionista, whatever it is that you're trying to do on Instagram, whatever you're trying to show, don't expect anything. Don't get on Instagram and think you're gonna be the next overnight celebrity. I mean, it's fine to want that, but don't expect it because you might not get it and then what? And now you've set yourself up because of your expectations. Don't look at what anyone else is doing. Focus on you, focus on your content, focus on your audience, engage with your audience. Whether you have a thousand followers or 10 million followers, engage with your audience. If someone press that follow, that means they're interested in you. They want to see you. They like your work. They like your photos. So just have fun with it. At the end of the day, it should be fun. It shouldn't be a job. It shouldn't feel like something you have to do. It shouldn't feel like a chore. So just make sure you're enjoying your content. Have fun with your photos. Have fun sharing. Have fun engaging. And your social media experience will be a lot better. What was your first job? So my first job was when I was 16 years old. I don't know if I was 15 or 16. Let's just say I was 16. And it was a clothing store. So I worked in every single retail store in Manhattan. <laughs> I've done so much retail work, it's not normal. So my first job was working at a store called... Cold? What's cold? <laughs> A store called ONG. That's what the store was called. And they, they had Levi's jeans and they had Parasuco jeans back in the day. That's when Parasuco jeans were popping. They had cute little tees. So it was kind of like a casual type vibe. So someone asked me and someone were arguing if you got surgery to make your waist look smaller. Is that true? Absolutely not. Okay. I always get asked this. This is probably... I mean, anytime I post any type of outfit, this might be the top asked question. Did I do something to make my waist smaller? What do I do? Did I take ribs out? It's crazy. Where do you guys come up with this? Okay, no. My waist has always been this way. I've posted old pictures of myself, like, and there's old pictures on my Instagram. If you wanted to know, you could scroll all the way down and see that I've always been shaped this way. It's literally genetic, like my mom has a small waist, or maybe not now as much. I love you mom, sorry. But it, some things are just genetic. You either have them or you don't. It's not something I can control or I ask for or I work on. Even when I gain weight, I, my waist still cuts in the same way that it does now. The only difference is if I gain weight, I'll obviously gain inches on the side, but the waist will still be present no matter how thin or thick I get, the waist still stays there. It's just the way my body is curved in. It's the way I was born. I thank God for it every day. It's not surgery. That's ridiculous. I hate to say it, but that's ridiculous. I mean, there's literally hundreds of thousands of millions of people in the world that also are genetically small in the waist. So we can't now assume every single person that is genetically born with a small waist that it's surgery or fake or not real or they didn't have that before or like come on we gotta do better than that guys when did your career really start taking off i would say 2013 was kind of like the mark of when i really started getting noticed by brands and there was actual opportunities on instagram to start building a career one of the first brands that ever noticed me and gave me a shot was Anastasia Beverly Hills. And you guys know that me and Anastasia are, besides our business relationship, we're very, very close. She is like a second mom to me. She was the first brand to take me seriously on Instagram. Claudia 
who was my best friend, who was Anastasia's daughter. You guys know her as Norvina. She scouted me out and I guess she liked what she saw and she seen potential. And you know, they were the first people, the first brand to really take me serious. And they offered me my first collaboration ever in 2013, which came out in 2014. I was the first social media Instagram influencer to be offered a collaboration. I mean, this was a huge deal. It still is a huge deal. Even just now saying that, I was like, what? Like I used to work in Sephora and take my clients to Anastasia Gondola where all her brow products were there anytime they needed anything brow related. So to be even discussing a collaboration and you know doing a palette together was like, the coolest thing that's ever happened to me it was it was where my career kind of jumped off after that i received countless other opportunities some i said no to some i said yes but that was really where i felt a career actually starting everything before that was i want to say practice oh wow look at that i've been filming for i want to say like it hasn't even been an hour and the sun's already going down. The video started off with daylight and now it's like dark. If you weren't a content creator, what would you be doing? I would say I've always been into graphic design. So I definitely would be in the arts. If I wasn't an influencer, it would have to be something in the arts. I've always been fascinated with editing and even back in high school I used to have this program I wish I remembered what it was called it was a specific name it wasn't Photoshop but it was a really great program I didn't have a Apple computer back in the day this is when like PCs were still in and I would literally spend countless hours editing photos mind you I've been doing this I've been taking photos and been into photography way before Instagram so for any of you who were curious on, you know, if this, if this is just something that I do now just because it's in or whatever. I've always been into photography since I was in high school. I would spend hours editing photos and effects and just, I was obsessed with anything to do with graphic design. So I would definitely, I would be into graphic design if I wasn't a social media influencer. It would have to be something where I could express myself and edit content even if it wasn't content of myself do you ever feel awkward taking pictures just anywhere with people around how do you overcome it if you ever have felt that way oh my god so absolutely i get awkward i am a lot of people wouldn't even know this because they they think of me in a certain way or they see my photos and they think they have me figured out just based off of my resting bitch face but i'm so shy you guys you have no idea I am so shy. It's weird because I'm shy and I'm not. I have I have many dimensions to me, but I absolutely do get awkward when people are staring at me while I'm taking photos. It is never a comforting feeling. It never feels cool to just have someone staring at you across the street or staring at you. Let's say I'm shooting in front of a, I don't know, a store and someone is a few meters away from me and they're just looking at me like, what is she doing? I may stop for a few seconds just to scope out the environment, but besides that, I will continue to shoot the content and hopefully get the shot, and I usually do. But it's never not awkward. It's always awkward for me. Leo sometimes thinks it's funny because he's like, why do you care? Like, why do you care if someone's staring at you? Let them stare, and it's like, it's weird. You know, you're, just, you're sitting there trying to be in the zone and you're taking photos or you're let's say you're doing walking shots and someone's just staring at you probably like silently judging you like what the fuck is she doing but you know you got to push through awkward or not you got to get that shot okay and that's what it's all about what is your favorite food italian food Ugh. i love italian food i could literally survive off of pasta for the rest of my life and i would be happy just pasta that's it just pasta. If you could give your 15 year old self any advice for the future now, what would it be? I would probably tell myself to chill out. Chill out. Chill. Stop rushing. Stop rushing to be older. Enjoy your youth. I used to want to be older so bad. Oh my God. When I was 15, I wanted to be 18. When I was 18, I wanted to be 21. When I was 21, I wanted to be 25. I don't know why I always wanted to be a grown ass woman. 
but adulting is not easy. So I would tell my 15 year old self to slow down and enjoy my childhood and enjoy being young and enjoy being carefree and enjoy not having to think about bills. <laughs> Everyone say hi to Leo. Hi. If it wasn't for Leo, we wouldn't have nothing okay we would have no content i wouldn't even be here doing this right now because like i said he set up all the lights everything leo is the operational part of the amrezi brand thank you okay? thank you far too kind without leo we don't have the umbreezy brand i said umbreezy umbreezy brand You're listening too much there <laughs> so yeah thank leo for you know all the content that you see it's my honor <laughs> it's an honor. <laughs> How long does it take you to edit a photo? Oh my god. Um, really long. Now I know you're thinking like, oh, what do you do? Are you changing the whole photo? Or are you a catfish? Or are you blah, blah, blah? Well, clearly I'm not a catfish if I'm on video. Looking the same as I do in photos. But anyways, it takes me a long time to edit photos because photos never, ever portray the true beauty of that moment so you could look bomb like every your makeup is amazing hair outfit you could look great you may not be able to catch it on camera that's just what it is after we do shoot the photos i'll see potentials i'll favor my potentials and then i'll take them into facetune and i always try to do on facetune what you can't catch in the photos so a lot of times photos don't catch my eye color or they won't catch the detail, or maybe it's faded. So I have to do all these things to make the photo look the way I look in real life, or the way I look that day. And I'm very, very particular, and a lot of effort goes into editing a photo. You know, sometimes you gotta, you gotta tune, you gotta tune some things, okay? So it takes me a good hot minute, and I don't mean an actual minute. Honestly, sometimes it'll take me hours. And the reason why it takes me hours, I don't mean I'm sitting there for hours editing. I'll start editing and then I'll go into Instagram or then I'll go on Twitter or then I'll text someone and then I'll start watching TV and then I'll forget that I started editing and then I go back into it. So if let's say I'm not taking any breaks, it'll take me anywhere from an hour to two hours. So the work has to be put in and you know, the tuning has to be put in. Okay, so. I think that concludes all the questions I wanted to answer for now. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I will do another Q&A soon. But for now, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter.